Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're continuing, continuing to recount some of the wonderful pastimes of our founder Acharya, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivinata Swami Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada wanted very much to establish the preaching in India. He knew that this is a, the home country of Krishna consciousness and he was sure to get a lot of people interested there. So Prabhupada uh, began, when he first came back to India after being in the West, he brought with him, he brought leaders, all the different leaders from different cities in, um, in USA, he brought them with him to India with them. And it was quite austere for them coming from America and then into India living in uh, difficult conditions, climatic conditions also, extreme. Uh, it, it was quite challenging for the devotees. It was also difficult for them to get along with each other because they'd all been used to being managers. And uh, they came to India, they all had to work together and not all of them could be managers. And at that time, that's early 1970s, uh, even late 60s, the relationship between the USA and India governments was not very good. So it's difficult for India for American people to stay in India very long. They couldn't get a visa for a long time. They could only get you know, short tourist visa. So Srila Prabhupada, when he came to England, he encouraged the devotees there. When he saw the devotees in England, he encouraged them 
He said, you know, some of you young men, it would be very good, you come to India and you can help in preaching in India. At that time, in, in proper time, British people coming to India didn't need a visa because they were British and India had formerly been a British colony. So the British had a relationship with India that British people coming to India didn't require a visa. So they could come there to India and stay as long as they liked. So several devotees from England went to India. At that time, I had gone to America, I, had, I joined in London and then I had gone to the USA and I was preaching and uh, doing Sankirtan in the USA, but so Srila Prabhupada had requested Gopal Krishna Prabhu at that time. He had requested him to come to India to help in the preaching work there because he knew Gopal Krishna Prabhu at that time. He was uh, from a, a good, a high class family. He was well educated and he wanted him to take, to get involved in the management there in India. So Prabhupada encouraged Gopal Krishna, you come to India, and uh, he did, and at that time he was based in New York, in New York Temple, and the New York Temple told him, you can take two brahmacharis with you, to India with you, we'll help you. This, actually, he asked the temple, he said, can you give me a couple of men, I can take them to India. So the temple agreed, and so it turned out I was one of the people given to Gopal Krishna Maharaj to go to India, because I, I, I was British and they knew it would be easy for me to stay in India. Yeah, Prabhupada was eager to do something in India. And he, he knew it was not going to be easy. He knew it would be a great challenge. And he wanted to get, uh, he wanted help from the Western temples and he expected them to provide men. So I remember coming to India, I came to India was 1975 and uh, at that time, first of all, went to Delhi. At that time in Delhi, the temple was in a place called Bengali Market. It was a small, very small rented house. And uh, the, the devotees there were worshipping Radha Partha Sarati, 
the, the big Radha and Krishna deities, although there was only four, t four devotees in the temple, there was only four. There was Tejas Prabhu and his wife, and there was a couple of American ladies, and there was one Indian man, and then I came. So it's really difficult. The, the only source of maintenance of the temple was coming from life membership. And we had to enroll people as life members. At that time, the membership fee was what we would see in Hindi, by so bice, 2,222 rupees. So, in Delhi, of course, is a Hindi speaking town. Of course, it's a national language, and we didn't really know how we didn't know Hindi, and it was not easy for us, therefore, to to meet people and to cultivate people and to get life members was not easy. We were a very new society and people were doubtful how long we could survive. Uh, people would ask us, where is your temple? And, you know, of course, at that time we just opened in 1974, I think, or 73, we opened the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. And that was the only temple in the whole of India. Actually, that was the only temple in the world at that time, practically. Everything else, the deities were put in some rented house, some rented property. So people would look at our society and they would see us and they would think, well, you know, how long are these people going to stay here? If I become a life member, what good will it do me, this society? Is it going to continue? We wonder how long it's going to continue. So Prabhupada would come to visit when he would come before going to Vrindavan. If he arrived in Delhi, before he went to the temple, before he went to Vrindavan, he would first of all come to the temple in Delhi. And the same, the sa he would do the same thing in Calcutta. When he arrived at Calcutta, before going out to Mayapur, he would come into the temple to come into the city, to come to the Calcutta temple and spend a day or two in Calcutta before going to Mayapur. He never neglected 
to go to any of the centers. He wanted to see each of the centers and see how they were doing, how they were maintaining. So I remember Prabhupada coming to our Delhi center. We were only a few people, as I said, like five, five devotees. And Prabhupada came and visited the temple. He stayed for the night. And his plan, of course, was to go to Vrindavan the next day. Uh, so we were a small temple, we didn't have any vehicle or any transportation of our own. But uh, Tejas Prabhu, the temple president, he had arranged a little program in our temple and he'd invited some of the important life members to come and meet Prabhupada. So I remember Prabhupada speaking to the one man, he was asking him, so what is your business? And the man said, I have a transportation company, I do road transportation, I have trucks. So Prabhupada said, oh, very good. He said, it's a very nice, you have truck business. He said, you must have a car. And the man said, oh, yes, I have my car. So Prabhupada said to the man, so he said, I, tomorrow I want to go to Vrindavan. Can you arrange transportation for me to go to Vrindavan? And the man said, well, yes, of course, why not? Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we just had a power cut here in Delhi. I was wondering. Maharaj, your, your video is not there, but your voice is okay. Yeah, okay, we had a power cut just now. I don't know when the video will come back. I didn't do anything. Sure, Maharaj, I think we are able to hear your uh, transcendental voice. Okay, we'll continue. The... Please, Maharaj, thank you. All right, so, so it was impressive to see how Prabhupada was thinking. He knew that it's difficult for the temple to arrange transportation for him. So he himself took advantage to engage the life member to provide the transport for him to go to Vrindavan. Uh, he, it shows how thoughtful Prabhupada was and how considerate he was. He didn't want to burden the temple. So, Srila Prabhupada liked very much to visit these different temples and to spend time and meet the people coming there. He wanted to meet life members, he wanted to talk to them and, and convince them about the Krishna consciousness movement. I remember in Calcutta, he would come to, when he would come to Calcutta, then he, we would invite all the people, the local people to come because of course Prabhupada's hometown is Calcutta. So there were many people in Calcutta who wanted to hear him and see him. 
So we had arranged the program for Prabhupada in the temple. And in Calcutta, Prabhupada would often give Bengali lecture. And he would expect us to also sit and listen, even though we didn't know any Bengali. He would say that the, the, the sound vibration is transcendental. Whether it, you don't have to understand, just the sound vibration will purify you. Another thing I remember about these programs in Calcutta it was that Prabhupada was very insistent that everybody has to get some kind of prasada. You have to get, even if you, even if you have to buy the sweets outside, you purchase from a sweet shop. But there must be something, you have to give something to the people. So that's you know that that's not an easy thing to arrange often, you know, you get you can get quite a, a Big, big crowd coming for lectures and you, you have to give everyone prasadam. So we would just purchase some milk sweets, some sandesh or something and distribute it to people. Now in Prabhupada's time, Going out to Mayapur it was quite a, a long journey and the roads were really, really bad in Prabhupada's time. It would take about four to five, five hours to get to Mayapur. And Prabhupada always had a program, he had a program that uh, ha about halfway to Mayapur, on, on the road, on the main road, there was, a, there was a little garden area with mango trees and Prabhupada would always stop there and he would take his breakfast there. So, on one occasion, there was a, quite a number of devotees going out to Mayapur with Prabhupada. Gargamuni had come, Gargamuni Swami at that time, he had come with a party and they had uh, Mercedes-Benz trucks. There was a fleet of about five truck, five vehicles, Mercedes-Benz vehicles, which he'd brought to India for preaching. And they were all going out to Mayapur with Prabhupada. Prabhupada had his car and all the other cars were following. Yeah, there was Gargamuni Swami and there was several there were several other Swamis also there at that time. And so what happened was with Prabhupada as usual, he went to the mango grove and everything was set up and Prabhupada was sat, Prabhupada was arranged and we all served Srila Prabhupada. Everybody served Prabhupada his breakfast. So, 
மாமர தோட்டத்திற்குள்ளே அமர்ந்தார் அப்பொழுது எங்களுடன் சேர்த்து பல பக்தர்கள் சில பிரபுபாதருக்கு உணவு பரிமாறி கொண்டிருந்தோம் and after prabhupa took his breakfast then we sat all the sanyasis down there was like half a dozen sanyasis there so all the sanyasis sat down and we all served the sanyasis their breakfast prabhu father unda piragu ange or aaru sanyasigal pola irundargal and sanyasigal anevarum amara naangal avargalukku prasadam parimarino then after the sanyasis had finished their breakfast then we all took our prasadam அந்த சன்னியாசிகள் அனைவரும் தங்களது உணவை முடித்த பிறகு நாங்கள் எங்களது பிரசாதத்தை உண்ண தொடங்கினோம் So Shri Lal Prabhupad was watching and he was very pleased and he said afterwards he commented he said he said when the etiquette is observed then certainly Krishna is present So Prabhupad and I part me go magichi adaindar piragu poduvaga avar kodinar indha varaimuraiyanadhu seriyaga anusarikkapadumanar Krishna migum Well, later on we would read in Chaitanya Charitamrita how Lord Chaitanya had tested Sanatana Goswami how Sanatana Goswami walked on the hot sand burning his feet rather than walking in front of the temple of Lord Jagannath அதற்கு பின்னால் சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு அவர் எவ்வாறு சனாதன கோஸ்வாமியை சோதித்தார் என்பதை நாங்கள் படித்தோம் சனாதன கோஸ்வாமி அவர் கடும் வெயிலில் மணலில் நடந்து கொண்டு வந்தார் நேரடியாக வராமல் மணலில் அவர் நடந்து கொண்டு வந்த அந்த நிகழ்ச்சியை பற்றி நாங்கள் படித்தோம் So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased that Sanatana Goswami was so careful to observe the etiquette சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு அவர் சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு அவர் சனாதன கோஸ்வாமி இந்த வரைமுறையை மிக கவனமாக அனுசரித்திருக்கின்றார் என்பதில் மிகவும் மகிழ்ச்சி அடைந்தார் In the same way Srila Prabhupada was also very pleased when he saw the devotees carefully following the etiquette இந்த வரைமுறையை பக்தர்கள் மிகவும் கவனமாக பின்பற்றுவதை பார்த்த Srila Prabhupadaரும் மிகவும் திருப்தி அடைந்தார் You have to understand you know we're coming from people like myself come from the western background western culture we don't know the etiquette we don't know things like only eating prasadam with your right hand we have to learn all of this mene potra manithargal merkathiya naadugalindu varakoodiyavargal andha varaimuraiyai nandraga unar kattukollendirukka vendum udharanathirkku nam prasadathai mattum alagu iradu valadu kaiyinal mattume unna vendum pondra varaimuraigalai nichchayamaga unarthirukka Prabhupada would be very concerned that the devotees could be could show proper uh, standards of behavior and etiquette because it reflected on him whatever our movement did it would reflect on him Agaveshila Prabhupada migavum kavanathudan seyalpattar enendral ennalla nam seigindromo avai anaithum shila Prabhupada in meedu or thaakathai undaakum If somebody offers you prasadam and you take the prasadam with your left hand, then it's very, very bad. It looks very bad, and people all certainly notice. உதாரணத்திற்கு யாரோ பிரசாதம் அளிக்கின்றார்கள் அதை ஒருவர் இடது கையால் உண்டாரையானால் அது மிகவும் தவறானது மக்கள் இதை பார்த்து தவறாக கருத்து கொள்வர் பட் கமிங் फ्रॉम अ வெஸ்டர்ன் கல்ச்சர் தீஸ் தீஸ் திங்ஸ் வெர் வி வர் நாட் அவேர் ஆஃப் தேம் வி ஹேட் டு பீ ட்ரெய்ன்ட் இன் ஆல் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஆனால் மேற்கத்திய நாடுகளில் இருந்து வரக்கூடிய காரணத்தினால் எங்களுக்கு இந்த விஷயங்கள் அனைத்தும் தெரியவில்லை இவை அனைத்தும் எங்களுக்கு பயிற்சி அளிக்கப்பட வேண்டும் So Srila Prabhupada was always constantly reminding us and pointing these things out to us how important it was. Srila Prabhupada engalukku melum melum idai kooli konde irundar angal evvaru kavanathoda seyalpada vendum evvaru idellam kattukolla vendum endru engalukku meendum meendum aliyurthi konde irundar. I remember one time in Calcutta uh, Uh, Prabhupada was there and he was giving class and this this one Bengali man had come and he was listening to Prabhupada's lecture and so at the end of the lecture the man stood up and he said and yeah he said and all your devotees he said they were traveling in their vehicle and they all came they stayed at my house and they stayed at my house for several days and I was taking giving them prasadam 
And Prabhupada was laughing, he's saying, oh, very nice, very good. <laughs> Prabhupada was appreciating the fact that the man had accepted some inconvenience, having all the devotees come and stay in his house and feed them. But Prabhupada was encouraging him that very nice, you'll get the blessings of Lord Krishna. So when Prabhupada would come in Calcutta, you know our temple in Calcutta at that time it was it was the facilities were very limited. We didn't have proper toilets or bathing facilities. It was very difficult. And when Prabhupada came, there was only the one bathroom. So we all had to start using the lake across the road. And we go in the lake to take our bath. And certainly, of course, Prabhupada was aware that our facilities were not much, they were not really up to the standard, but he encouraged us, he said, uh, just tolerate, don't be dis... he said, uh, don't mind the inconvenience. Prabhupada was also aware of the thinking of the Western devotees. He understood the devotees coming from the West that they will be thinking about going into restaurants and tasting the different dishes which they prepare there. So Prabhupada I remember on the very first day practically when all the devotees had come from the West, Prabhupada was giving class and he said, don't eat in the restaurants. He said, you're all devotees, you've taken, you put on the neck beads, tosi mala around your neck, you're putting on tilak, many of you are shaving your heads. He said, you're representing this culture and people know you're not supposed to eat in restaurants. So he was pointing out to all the devotees that they shouldn't go into restaurants and eat there. And when the devotees first came to Mayapur, in the first couple of festivals in Mayapur, we weren't very sure they weren't very sure what to do, there was no clear program and people would come and it would be difficult for them and they would end up laying around and just uh, sweltering in the heat. Prabhupada 
And so then some devotees got the idea to start giving more classes, to start having more seminars. Then Prabhupada was very pleased and he encouraged that. And he knew that devotees coming from the West, they, not everyone is so much inclined to study Shastra. But he, he, he said that those who don't want to study Shastra, they can work in the fields. He said they can do the agriculture, the farming. So Prabhupada understood that Krishna consciousness is for everyone and not everyone is going to be a Brahman, but everyone is a devotee and they can be engaged in some way or other for the service of Krishna. One devotee had come from Hawaii and he knew about gardening. And so he started to plant flowers and he'd been growing a lot of flowers in Mayapur and Prabhupada was so pleased by that. Another devotee was expert motor mechanic and he could arrange it, he could fix them. When Prabhupada's car had any problems, he could immediately fix it. And Prabhupada appreciated that. So Prabhupada liked to see the devotees use whatever skills they had to use them in the service of Krishna. I had the opportunity of being with the BBT library party and we were travelling around India distributing Prabhupada's books, uh, sets of Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita to libraries all over India. So before before Prabhupada had gone to the West, he had printed the first three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam in India and he'd also taken orders and he had received orders from some government libraries. So in course of time, we were bringing out more and more volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, as Prabhupada would write. His, trans his writings would go to the BBT office in Los Angeles and they would edit it and type it all up and edit it and, and then they would get it printed and gradually bring out more volumes of Bhagavatam. And then Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the middle of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Chaitanya Charitamrita started to come out and uh, one devotee, one American devotee had come and he, he went round the different holy places and to the different temples and took pictures of different temples and holy places and deities and these were used to also illustrate the Chaitanya Charitamrita. 
இப்பொழுது சைத்தன்ய சரிதாமிரதமானது ஸ்ரீமத் பாகவதம் வெளியிடப்படக்கூடிய மத்தியில் அந்த பாக சைத்தன்ய சரிதாமிரதமானது வெளியிடப்பட்டது ஒரு அமெரிக்க பக்தர் அனைத்து திவ்ய இடங்களுக்கும் சென்று அங்கு பல புகை புனைப்படங்களை எடுத்து அங்கு சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு லீலைகளையும் எடுத்துரைக்கும் விதத்தில் சேவை செய்து கொண்டிருந்தார் so we were asked to you know i was asked to i i got the opportunity to join the bbt previously I'd been working and doing life membership but i got the opportunity to join bbt and it meant i could go and travel around india and see the different places and at the same time distribute proper books நான் முதலில் ஆயுள் உறுப்பினர்களை சேர்ப்பதில் சேவை செய்து கொண்டிருந்தேன் பிறகு பக்தி வேதாந்த புத்தக அறக்கட்டளையில் சேவை செய்யக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பானது கிடைத்து நான் அதன் மூலமாக பல இடங்களுக்கு சென்று பிரச்சார பணியிலும் ஈடுபட்டேன் so we would show them the books and we would request them to take the books for their library nan indiyavil irukkukudiya perumbalana kovilgalukku selven andha kovilgalai noolagamana irukkum andha noolagathirkku sendru avargalai indha puthagagalai eduthukollumbadi korikai kodupom and we would show them you know if, if if the picture of their temple was in our book then that would be a great advantage and they would be very impressed to see the picture of their temple in our book and they would immediately order the whole set naangal avargalad kovile engalad puthagathil irukkukudiya pakkathil kaatinom endral adai paarthu avargal miga magichi adaivargal idan moolamaga engalukku perumalavil aadargal kedaithathu idan moolamaga avargalukku naangal indha paavadam pondra puthagangal settai appadi alithom Of course Chaitanya Charitamrita is in Bengali not very suitable for them you know like South Indian temples and so on they didn't like this Bengali book <laughs> Bengali Shastra but we show them the temp- the picture of their temple and say no look your temple is here it's all told about you in this book you know your wonderful temple and so we would convince them to get the books குருவாக சைத்தன்ய சரிதாமிரதமானது வங்காள மொழியில் இருந்தது தமிழ் தென்னிந்தியாவில் வங்காளத்தை பற்றி அதிக ஆர்வம் மக்கள் கொள்வதில்லை ஆனால் நாங்கள் அவர்களிடம் பாருங்கள் இந்த புத்தகத்தில் உங்களது கோவிலின் சிறப்பம்சம் இருக்கின்றது என்று கூறும் போது அவர்கள் மிகுந்த ஆர்வம் காட்டுவார்கள் இதன் மூலமாக அவர்களை சமாதானப்படுத்தி நாங்கள் புத்தகங்களை அவர்களிடம் கொடுத்தோம் and then we would also go to schools and colleges and so on and we would ask them to also get our books but they would say well we need to get permission we need to get recommendation from the chief minister nangal pala kallurigal pal pallikalukku sendru avargal idathil nangal puthagangalai kodupom aanal avargal nangal mudalamaichar idam irundhu anumathi petra piragu dhaan nangal indha puthagangalai eduthukolla mudiyum endru engalidam poorinargal so we would go to the government offices we'd find out where the chief minister was and we'd meet the the secretary of the chief minister அப்பொழுது நாங்கள் அரசாங்க அலுவலகத்திற்கு சென்று முதலமைச்சரை பார்ப்பதற்கு போவோம் முதலில் நாங்கள் முதலமைச்சரின் உதவியாளர்களை பார்ப்பதற்கு சென்றோம் you know chief ministers are all very busy people they're all big men with the, they're, they're very much involved with politics and they don't have much time mudalamechar poduvaga inda arasiyil irpar kaaranathinal avarku podumana neramanadhu engalidan kadaipadharkku migavum kadinamaga irundathu avargal eppozhudume mumbaramaga thangaladhu velai irundha kaaranathinal engalal avargalai paarkka mudiyavillai but we would meet the secretary to the chief minister who would be some very nice polite elderly man and we'd talk to him and make friends with him and give him some books presents ஆனால் நாங்கள் முதலமைச்சரின் உதவியாளர்களை சந்திப்போம் அவர் சற்று வயது புதிந்த நபராக அல்ல நடத்தை கொண்டவராக இருப்பார் அவர்களிடம் நட்பு ரீதியாக பாராட்டி அவர்களுக்கு புத்தகம் பிரசாதம் போன்றவற்றை கொடுத்து அவர்களிடம் ஒரு நல்ல உறவை நாங்கள் ஏற்படுத்தி கொண்டோம் and then we would tell him what we wanted we would tell him that we want a letter from the chief minister recommending the schools and colleges to purchase sets of our books நாங்கள் 
and he said, you write up the letter. He said, I will type it up for you. And he said, then I'll put it in all the other letters. I said, I have to give the chief minister all these letters to sign. And he just signs them. He doesn't read the letters. He'll just sign them. So I'll put your letter in there too and he can sign that one too. and so this is what happened you know we, in this way we get a recommendation from the chief minister we go to the colleges and the schools we show them the letter chief minister recommend the books and they say okay 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 and then they sign up for a full set of proper books and every week we'd send a report to we send a a, 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 a cable you know a telegram to Prabhupada. 50 sets distributed in Gujarat, 47 sets distributed in Andhra Pradesh, 70 sets in Tamil Nadu. We'd send them a report how many books we were, how many sets of books we were distributing. And Prabhupada liked very much to get these reports. It was because Prabhupada's health was not very good, but when he would get reports about how many books we were distributing and how many places were signing up for standing orders of new books, he was very encouraged. One time Prabhupada asked the devotees from the library party, he asked them, he said, how do you do it? How do you manage to get so many orders? Because Prabhupada knew it's not a very easy thing to distribute these books, religious books. And then when we told Prabhupada about how we did it, how we got the secretary of the chief minister's help and then Prabhupada said, oh very good. He said, Krishna gave you good intelligence how to do it. Even one devotee, he was distributing books in, there was this one Jain temple and there was a Jain, the head of the Jain temple was there, he was a Jain saint and he didn't speak any English but he could understand Sanskrit. So he had, he had the devotee, he had the, one of the people read the Sanskrit to him. And so of course they were devotees, they had very much faith in Lord Rishabdev and when they saw that the fifth canto was about Lord Rishabdev they were very impressed and they wanted to hear what is Rishabdev's teaching, what did what what are uh, what is said about Lord Rishabdev? So they read the Sanskrit. They could only read the Sanskrit. They couldn't read the English. They read the Sanskrit text, and they said, "Oh, very good. We will take the set." 
அப்பொழுது அவர்கள் ரிஷப தேவரை பற்றி அங்கு பாகவதத்தில் ஐந்தாவது காண்டத்தில் குறிப்பிடப்பட்டிருப்பதை பார்த்தவுடன் மிகவும் மகிழ்ச்சி அடைந்தார்கள் அவர்கள் ஆங்கிலம் தெரியாதவர்களாக இருந்தாலும் இந்த சமஸ்கிருதத்தின் உச்சரிப்பை கேட்க கேட்க அவர்களுக்கு ரிஷப தேவர் மீது இன்றும் கேட்க வேண்டும் என்கின்ற ஆவலின் காரணமாக இந்த புத்தகங்களின் செட்டை அவ்வாறே வாங்கி கொண்டனர் So in this way we were distributing Prabhupada's books in these days, 1970s. We were traveling around, going to colleges. We'd always, they'd ask us always, give a class, give a talk to the students, and we would address them all. We would get them all to chant, teach them all the Maha Mantra. And just get them all impressed about the Hare Krishna movement, how it's everywhere, going all over the world. We were in one town and the people told us that there's a guru in our town, you should go and see the guru. And so we went to the place where the guru was living and we met him and He was very nice to us and so we preached to him and we showed him about our Krishna Consciousness Movement. And we showed him photographs of centers all over the world and how we're printing books in different languages. And he was really um, impressed. And he, 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 although he was a guru, he brought some, he bought books for himself. So in the town usually people would come to him and give him donations, but when we came he gave us donations. <laughs> So this way Srila Prabhupada's movement was so, uh, it, it was so sensational in the, in the 1970s and 60s and, well, 1970s, it, it was really something was really impressing people that they were seeing foreigners taking up this Krishna consciousness and traveling around preaching. But Prabhupada was concerned, he, he thought that the Indian people are not joining. He said, some are becoming life members, but he said, they're not joining, they're not taking up Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada particularly wanted to see the educated Indians coming to Krishna Consciousness, people with a good education, he thought that if they will take up Krishna Consciousness, then they could be very useful in spreading this message. No, we don't make any distinction. Everyone's got an opportunity, equal right, to become Krishna conscious. But if one has a good 
knowledge, then it's so much easier, it's so much uh, easier for them to preach Krishna consciousness and to distribute it everywhere. We know Srila Prabhupada had a very good education himself, that he was special among the devotees of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, that not only did he know English, but he was also well educated in Sanskrit. And of course his Bengali and Hindi are there, they are his like native languages, so he was very well equipped for preaching everywhere. And he wanted the devotees that they would also be well prepared and qualified and able to distribute the message of Lord Chaitanya. Can you repeat once again? He wanted the de his devotees, the, the devotees, the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement should also be well equipped. They should know different languages and be able to preach. And so, from Srila Prabhupada, he gave the, the structure how devotees should study. He explained about Bhakti Shastri, then Bhakti Vaibhav, then Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Sarvabhoma, and he explained about how they can study the different books. And Prabhupada, Bhakti Shastri was the basic book, Bhagavad Gita, Ishopanishad, Nectar of Instruction and the first part of Nectar of Devotion. Then Bhakti Vai Bhav will be the first six cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then Bhakti Vedanta, the, the last six cantos. And then Bhakti Sarvabhoma, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Prabhupada said also, he said, spiritual teachers, those who are doing the work of spiritual masters, initiating spiritual masters, they should study up to, at least up to Bhakti Vaibhav. He wanted that the devotees would, would read his books and they would know the philosophy. Prabhupada said, I did not write the books for you just to sell only. He said, I wrote the books for you all to read. Of course, he was pleased that the devotees were enthusiastic to go out and sell the books, but he was also very pleased when he saw that the devotees were reading his books. And Srila Prabhupada used to read the books himself. He used to sit and he would have a devotee come and read Krishna book to him 
and he would sit and listen and he would feel so much pleasure. And Prabhupada would remark, I have not written these books, Krishna has written them through me. So the business, our business is devotees, uh, that certainly we have to read all of Prabhupada's books. And if you don't want to just read them one time, you want to read them again and again. We have to know them well. So, as, a, as devotees, we have a, a responsibility to our founder Acharya, to not only to distribute his books, but to read them, and to study them, and to teach them. Prabhupada saw how there's so much money, so much emphasis and importance put on material education, which is very temporary and uh, very limited. And there's a great need for spiritual education. It's very much lacking around the world. I remember one morning, I was given the opportunity to go on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada. There was only Prabhupada with his secretary, Shamsundar Prabhu, and then myself and another brahmachari. We were four people only. We went in the car, and we drove to a park, then we walked in the park. So as we walked in the park, we could see there was a policeman and he was waking someone up. There was some young man laying there sleeping in the park and the policeman was kicking him, telling him, get up, get up. <laughs> So Prabhupada commented, he said, you see, the man, he's coming from a, a, a good home, his mother and father have a good house, but he's sleeping in the park. And then Prabhupada told a story. He said, you know, one time Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati were walking in the market and they were approached by a beggar man asking for some contribution. So Lord Shiva's wife Parvati showed her womanly nature and she felt sorry for the man and she requested her husband, can't we give him something to help him? So Lord Shiva said to his wife, he said, well, this is a man's karma. The, and he said, we, I may, we could try to help him, but it's not going to change his karma. 
கொஞ்சம் சிவபெருமான் கூறினார் இதுதான் இந்த மனிதனின் கர்ம விடையாகும் நாம் ஏதேனும் செய்வதற்கு முயற்சி செய்தாலும் இவரது கர்ம விடை இவ்வாறுதான் அமையும் என்று சிவபெருமான் பார்வதி தேவியிடம் கூறினார் So Lord Shiva in order to convince his wife he took a fruit and he took a fruit like a a a a, a, papa, a papaya something hollow inside you know and with inside the fruit he put valuable golden necklace jewels அப்பொழுது சிவபெருமான் ஒரு பழத்தை அதாவது குழியாக இருக்கக்கூடிய பப்பாளி என்று நினைக்கின்றேன் அந்த பழத்தை எடுத்து அதுக்குள்ளில் மிக உயர்ந்த ஒரு நெக்லஸை வைத்து கொடுத்தார் அண்ட் தென் ஹி கேவ் தி ஃப்ரூட் டு தி மேன் அண்ட் தி மேன் டுக் தி ஃப்ரூட் பட் தி மேன் டிட் நட் நோ தேர் வர் ஜூஸ் இன்சைட் தி ஃப்ரூட் அண்ட் ஹி சிம்பிளி டுக் தி ஃப்ரூட் அண்ட் ஹி வென்ட் அண்ட் சோல்ட் இட் ஃபார் அ வெரி ஸ்மால் அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் மணி அப்பொழுது அந்த மனிதர் இந்த பழத்தை பெற்றுக் கொண்டார் அந்த மனிதருக்கு தெரியாது இந்த பழத்திற்குள்ளே மிக உயர்ந்த கற்களானது இருக்கின்றது என்று அவர் அதை தெரியாமல் இந்த பழத்தை எடுத்துக்கொண்டு மிகவும் சிறிய பணத்திற்காக அதனை விற்பனை செய்து விட்டார் So in this way Lord Shiva was convincing his wife that you can't really change this man's karma ஆகவே விதமாக சிவரது கர்மாவை நிச்சயமாக யாராலும் மாற்ற முடியாது என்று பார்வதி தேவியிடம் சமாதானம் கூறினார் and probably said in the same way he said these young people although although they are born in a good home and so on but they they can't take advantage of their karma aposhila prabhupadar purina inda manidargal miga uyarnda kudumbathil nalla petrorgalukku pirandalum ivargalade karma vidayanadu maatra paduvadhu illai so prabhupad like to see everything in a very philosophical way He was always relating everything to Krishna consciousness. There's nothing separate from Krishna. When uh, one man and one professor in the uk had published an edition of the bhagavad gita in which he said a number of offensive things about lord krishna oru murai ame london il irukka kodi oru perasiriyar oru bhagavad geethai achittar adhil krishna rep patri thavarana karuthukal palavatrai kuri irundar the man had said that you know krishna was wrong he should not have encouraged arjuna in this battle and because he encouraged arjuna in this battle so many millions of people died it was all krishna's fault avar kuri irundha krishna arjuna dai poru pudiyumbadi utukka padithi irukka koodade arjuna dai krishna utukka padithiya kaaranathinal pala kodi makkal porkalathil uyir ilandargal idarku muluvadum krishna dai kaaranam avare kutravali endru krishna dai angu kandanam seidirundar so prabhu pad told this uh, sanyasi who was there in london at that time prabhupad told him he said i want you to go through his book and every mistake everything which he's got wrong i want you to note it down and then write to him and tell him all his mistakes appozh prabhupad andalil irundha or sanyasi bhaktaridam korinar neengal andha puthagangalai nandraga padithu avar seidha ovvor pilaiyum kurithu and the pillai avarku neengal eduthurai kavendum endru prabhupada sanyasi idam kuriyan and prabhupada himself said he said this man is accused krishna but in bhagavad gita krishna accuses him appozh krishna and prabhupada kuriyan inda manidhar krishna rai kutram saatukindrar kandanam seigindrar anal bhagavad gita il bhagavano idha dushtargalai kandanam seigindrar and prabhupad quoted the verse namam duskriti no mudha prapajyante naradama maya aparita gyanam asuram bhavam ashrita that there are four kinds of sinful impious people who never surrender to krishna appozh shila prabhupada bhagavad gita il irundhu merkol kaatinar namam duskriti no mudha prapajyante naradama maya aprakrita gyanam asuram bhava ashrita Yes, there is a foolish man who's like a mudha, and then there's the lowest of men, the naradama, and then there's one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and then there's the, athe- the atheistic and the offensive. 
Persians. They are all empires. So Prabhupada said, you have accused Krishna of being sinful, but in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna accuses you. He, point, he says, you are the empire. So Prabhupada told the sannyasi, you write to him and point out every one of his mistakes. He said, don't just write one letter. He said, you can write every week. Every week you make a note on different points which he's got wrong in his Bhagavad Gita and send it to him. So one time one person came to Prabhupada and he said, you know, he said, your books, he said, your translation is not very accurate, you know. He said, you say these different things, you put in so many other words there. Just like it says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, and you put Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said. He said, it just says Bhagavan Uvacha, but you say so many things. You say Lord Krishna, you say the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He said, the man said, you add so many other things there. Prabhupada said, this man is very intelligent. He can understand how I am writing. And Prabhupada explained to the man, he said, I say like this because I want to make it very clear to people. If he, said, he said, if I don't tell them exactly everything, then they will just speculate on it for themselves. He said, I have to make it very clear what the meaning is. So Srila Prabhupada spent so much time writing his books and uh, we know how he would wake up in the middle of the night and write it was the only time he could get proper peace to think about writing. Prabhupada said, when I was a young man, I gave up mating and defending. And now in my old age, I have also conquered eating and sleeping. So material life is based on these four things, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. But when we become convinced about Krishna consciousness, then we definitely want to control these things very carefully. And Srila Prabhupada showed us very carefully, by his own example, how to control the senses. Of course, Prabhupada initiated many young men as sannyasis and he knew it was not going to be very easy for them. 
சில பிரபுபாதர் பல பேருக்கு சந்நியாச தீட்சை கொடுத்திருக்கின்றார் நிச்சயமாக அவருக்கு தெரியும் இதை கடைபிடிப்பது என்பது அவர்களுக்கு மிகவும் கடினமான ஒன்று of the of the several people who prop and give sanyas to only very very few were able to remain sanyasis chila prabhu pada sanyasam koduthavargalai pala pala sanyasa nilayil irundhu vilichi adaindu vittana avargalai silar mattume dhaan andha kodpaadugalai kadaipidithu kondirundhanar and prabhupad was disappointed he understood these western men they're not very familiar with what the sanyas vow means and they take it lightly and after accepting sanyas then again they give it up avare prabhupada unarndar inda perkathiya bhaktargal sanyasi endral enna endru theriyamal irukkindrana avargal indhu yetrukondu piragu adan kodpadugalai pinpatta mudiyamal andha sanyasa nilaiyai kai vittu vidukindrana so prabhupada certainly wanted good sanyasis but they they were important for the to establish the preaching of the krishna consciousness movement agavishila prabhupada serandha sanyasigal inda krishna bhakti yakathai parapuvatharku thevai endru nenaithu kondirundar at the same time he wanted everyone he he saw krishna consciousness as an opportunity for everyone regardless of their ashram that they can all be active in preaching krishna consciousness ஆனால் <laughs> யாரேனும் பக்தியிலிருந்து வீழ்ச்சி புலனின்ப காரணமாக பக்தியிலிருந்து வீழ்ச்சி அடைந்து விட்டால் பிரபுபாதர் அதை பெரும் பொருட்டாக ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள மாட்டார் நிச்சயமாக பிரபுபாதருக்கு தெரியும் மாயையானது மிகவும் சக்தி வாய்ந்தது என்று and someone had a fall down because of sense gratification prabhupada would encourage them to remain in krishna consciousness but maybe they had to change their ashram அப்படி ஒருவேளை யாரேனும் புலர் இன்பத்தின் காரணமாக வீழ்ச்சி அடைந்து விட்டால் பிரபுபாதர் அவர்களை உற்சாகப்படுத்துவார் கிருஷ்ண உணர்வில் இருக்கும்படி கூறி அவர்களது ஆசிரமத்தை மட்டும் மாற்றிக்கொள்ளும்படி அவர்களுக்கு கூறுவார் Just like some days may be difficult in sanyas then prabhu said no harm you can get married you become a grihastha you'll be happier there ஒருவர் <laughs> he understood that there was going to be difficulties for people in different ashrams prabhupadar pala ashramangalil bhaktargalukku pala kashtangal irukkum endradhai nandraga unarndavaraga irundar but the main thing he wanted them to stay in krishna consciousness don't give up krishna consciousness avar edirpaarthathu anaivarume eppozhudum krishna unarvile irukka vendum krishna unarvai endha soolnalayilum kai vittu vida koodathu so we have a, a lot to thank shilu prabhupad for we have so much debt to him we can never expect to repay the debt shilu prabhupad arku naam patta kadane eppozhudum nammal thirupi selutha iyalade shilu prabhupad arku naam endra endraikkum nandri kadan pattirukkindrom adai endha tarunathilum nammal thirupi seluthuvathu endradhu iyalada onru so we hope that we can go on and dedicate life after life in the service of shila prabhupada's mission shila prabhupada in inda yakathirkku ovvor piravilum naam meendum meendum seva seiya vendum endradhaiye naam manadhil aasiyaga kolla vendum okay we will stop and ask if there's any questions thodan idai nikkolgiren yaar kedum sandega irundal dayu seindhu kelungal Thank you so much Maharaj thank you so much
I think we can never never repay our debt to you because you know you are only bringing us all this information to us about the glories of the qualities of Shilap Kumar. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Maharaj, one clarification. There are a couple of questions. If uh, no, we see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not even want to see the face of Hari, Chota Haridas when he had looked at uh, Chiki Mahiti's sister Madhavi uh, for in the uh, when he went to beg rice for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, but here we see Shila Prabhupada is being so merciful that even if they get back to the uh, different ashram and then continue their Krishna consciousness, that's fine. In, in, apparently, they, there seems to be some difference between what Mahaprabhu did in that particular case and in the case of Srila Prabhupada. So how to properly appreciate that Maharaj? Maharaja, our Prabhupada can now patta and under Kadari of Kodam Selta Muria de Adupola, Maharaja Namakuri in the Nigel Avadam and the Ketadana, Amum our theatre trick and under Kadan Patil Kimro, or Kelvi, Adao, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Adava, Chota Haridasa, Mada Visiki Mahadi, Engendra, Penai, Risi Wangabo, the Partha Dar Kagaway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our Kal and Niragarita, Anna, Apato, Prabhupada, our other Cedar Gul, and the Nilay Lil, the Vulandalu, Palava Ila and Ruchaka Padati, our Galay. Asra Marti Kundi, Krishna, or Rikumadi Uchaka Padina, upon the Park of Bode, Chaitanya Maha Prabirkum, Prabhupada, Piri, Alavi, Idevilana, the Irpa, the Polatiri Kindra, the Yopara Puri the Kulva there. Yes, uh, certainly it causes some disturbance to the social community when someone gives up sannyas and changes their ashram. But Srila Prabhupada was more concerned that the person should be given the opportunity to remain in Krishna consciousness. Even though it's not proper, but Prabhupada, in the mood of Lord Chaitanya or the mood of Lord Nityananda more, we have to be merciful in the Kali Yuga. Lord Chaitanya was teaching a very special case there. He wanted to show an example for everyone, to set standards for everyone. So he was very strict. What the sannyasis, you know, the, the condition of sannyasis then, and how they followed sannyas, you know, of course Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was initiated sannyas in the line of Shankaracharya and they have very strict rules about everything, how they follow it, who's allowed to come near them and, you know, no woman can come near them. Any woman come in the room, they must wear a full sari, their head must be covered. They can never come near, you never come near to the sannyasi. But but we look at the society today, you know, so many women are there and often they don't dress properly. But they come to the temple and they're not properly dressed. Even they come and they, they may come even to approach the, the sannyasis without being properly attired and without proper reason. So it's, uh, the, we have to understand the position of sannyas in ISKCON today, it's a facility for preaching. 
நாம் ஒன்றை நன்றாக புரிந்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் இன்றைய காலகட்டத்தில் இஸ்கானின் சன்னியாசி என்கின்ற நிலையானது பிரச்சாரத்திற்காக மட்டுமே தான் வழங்கப்படுகின்றது கிருஷ்ணருக்கு பிரச்சாரம் என்கின்ற ரூபத்தில் பல்வேறு சேவைகளை செய்யக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பானது அந்த நிலையில் அவருக்கு கிடைக்கின்றது you know is an ashram and people is a progression which they go through they're coming from the you know, other ashram and they come into sanyas and it's like the final ashram the end of the life preparation for the end of the life leaving the body anal acha anda kalathil inda sanyasi ashramam endru vaalkeyin kadachi nilaiyaga irundathu vaalkeyil anaitha seigalum seitha piragu thangalai udalai udakkudiya tarunathil sanyasa nilai yetru aanmiga payirchiye avargal merkondu irundanar sanyasi endra nilaiyanadhu acha amayathil miga uyarthadaga potrapattum irundathu and there, there are sanyasis you know they they don't do much preaching hardly at all they just they're only bhajan they're just doing the bhajan the end of life they're just preparing for leaving the body achamethi sanyasigal perumalavil pracharam seivadillai avargal thangalade bhajaniye mattum seidukonde udalai vidakudiya tarunathil avargal aanmigathil eedupattirundanar there was one sanyas initiation which took place in mayapur in the year 1976 proper award in the give sanyas there were uh, i think seven seven men young men all took sanyas and one of prabhupada's friends was there and prabhupada's friend said to him he said you know they're all very young shrila prabhupada nan elakkoru nidai varigindrathu 1976 avadu varidam மாயாப்பூரில் சில பிரபுபாதர் ஏழு இளைஞர்களுக்கு சன்னியாசம் வழங்கினார் அப்பொழுது அங்கிருந்த பிரபுபாதரின் நண்பர் பிரபுபாதரிடம் கூறினார் இவர்கள் அனைவருமே இளைஞர்களாக இருக்கின்றார்களே என்று பிரபுபாதரிடம் கூறினார் அவர்கள் அனைவருமே இருபது வயதுகளில் இருந்தார்கள் Of course sometimes we know in, in uh, other lines you you get children taking sanyas they take sanyas at the age of 8 i think it was what age was sankaracharya when he took sanyas you know and then in the madhva ashram also they have bala sanyasis மேலும் பல மடங்களிலும் சன்னியாசிகள் இளைஞர் இளைஞர்களாக இருக்கின்றார்கள் உதாரணத்திற்கு சங்கராச்சாரியர் எடுத்துக்கொள்ளலாம் இவர்கள் அனைவருமே எட்டு இல்லை சிறிய வயதிலேயே சன்னியாசம் ஏற்றுக்கொள்கின்றனர் Anyway the man said to Prabhupada he said don't you think they're very young but Prabhupada's response was well if we wait till they're old man they won't be able to do very much அப்பொழுது அப்பொழுது அவர் கேட்டார் இவர்கள் அனைவரும் இளைஞாக இருப்பது உங்களுக்கு தெரியவில்லையா என்று பிரபுபாதர் பதிலளித்தார் இவர்கள் வயதாகும் வரை காத்திருந்தார் இவர்களால் எதுவுமே செய்ய முடியாது என்று கூறினார் So Prabhupada's mood was let them try to do something for Krishna மனப்பான்மை <laughs> and maybe they've even had a lot of sense gratification before coming to krishna consciousness and so it's difficult for them to enter into that mood of renunciation இவர்கள் மேற்கத்திய நாடுகளில் இருந்து வந்திருக்கின்றார்கள் புலன் இன்பத்தை பெருமளவில் அனுபவித்து இருக்கின்றார்கள் அத்தகைய நபர்கள் இந்த துறவர வாழ்க்கையில் ஈடுபடுவது என்பது ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய காரியமாகும் they took sanyas after being a devotee maybe for 3 or 4 or 5 years maximum பக்தர்களாகி 3 4 வருடங்களிலே இவர்கள் சன்னியாசி என்கிற நிலைக்கு தங்களை உயர்த்தி கொண்டு விட்டார்கள் and then after taking sanyas they may find difficulties ana sanyasa theatre piragu and the sanyasa nilayil irpadu enbadu ivargalukku migam kadinamanadaga irukkakoodum although in their 20s they're feeling that they want to do it but when they get to 40s they may have a change of mind 
இருபதுகளில் சன்னியாசம் ஏற்க வேண்டும் என்று நினைக்கக்கூடிய இந்த பக்தர்கள் நாற்பது வயது வரும்பொழுது அவர்களது மனமானது மாற்றப்படலாம் If one has to purify oneself very carefully before entering into this sannyasa life. In the sannyasa life, if you are able to do that, you will be able to do that, and you will be able to do that, and you will be able to do that. And one must be very convinced that this is ne the necessary path to follow. வழி <laughs> அல்ல Uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he 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 uh, recommended rather than sannyas, and uh, rather than the itinerant sannyas, he traveling and preaching everywhere. Better is to be a shetra sannyas and just simply stay in the holy place and chant the holy name and study the scriptures. <laughs> But Prabhupada said, I have declared war on Maya. What can I do? I have declared war on Maya. In the war time, we have to send everyone, even though they're unqualified, even though they're young, they're not experienced. We have to use everyone in the service of Krishna to fight against Maya. மாயம் Some people will fall down. Poor Kalam and Ravanda, Nichema, Virchi and Bad Nichem Irko, Adu Polave, in the Maya Yodu, Narata Kuri Yuta Tilum, Virchi and Bad Nichem Irka Kodum. When we would ask Prabhupada, when they say, you know, Prabhupada, you know, this devotee left, isn't it surprising? We never thought this devotee would leave. He would seem such a nice devotee. Prabhupada would say, don't be surprised who goes. Just be surprised that somebody stays. நபர்களைப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படுங்கள்ப்படு
Please go back to the recording and hear the answer. That's what exactly Maharaj was saying. That. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Maharaj, Maharaj, do you have some more time, or uh, yeah, yeah, more yeah, more just, uh, yeah, I have more time. Okay, sure. Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We see that in the in, in the narration in the last one of us, you uh, illustrated several aspects where Prabhupada was using the principles of. Yukta Vairagya, somebody was using the, uh, I mean, somebody was a uh, uh, motorist, and then he was using him to repair the car, somebody was gardener, and then he used him the decoration of flowers and things like that. And that that's the context this question is coming up. In today's scenario, of course, anyone who, uh, anyone, any walks of life, we would encourage him to chant Hare Krishna, practice Krishna consciousness, attend Tatsang, that's one aspect, Maharaj. But when it comes to allowing someone into the uh, as an inmate of a temple, there is definitely a standard required. In that sense, we may not be able to take everybody who has any other skill just because they have their skill and uh, take them to Krishna consciousness, use that particular skill because we want them to have a standard of Krishna consciousness. So how to uh, do this in a proper way that, uh, I mean, Prabhupada seemed to have used it. Anybody who comes in that, I mean, that's some understanding. Please clarify this much. ஈடுபடுத்தினார் <laughs> Yes, we want everyone to use their skills for the service of Krishna. At the same time, we also want everyone to chant Hare Krishna mantra and to follow four principles. So the principles of Krishna consciousness are also introduced. Not just only just, oh, you're good at fixing cars, very good. We want to teach everyone how to chant Hare Krishna and how to worship Krishna. <laughs> At the same time, if they have some skill, then they can use it in the service of Krishna. But the most important thing is that they develop also their Krishna consciousness. We want to engage people. We have to recognize their different talents. What are their skills? What can they do for Krishna? But it, the most important thing everyone has to do is to chant the holy name. And we have to also, of course, instruct them of the importance of bad habits. If they're accustomed to sinful activities, they have to stop that, they have to stop that, they have to rectify that, they have to lead a Krishna conscious life. So my point is that a Krishna conscious devotee can exist in any position in life. That he may be a he may be Shudra, he may be Vaishya, he may be Kshatriya, he may be Brahman. Not just only Brahmins. But Krishna consciousness is for people in every position, in every level of society.
Now, for example, somebody may be good in, in, as a Vaishya and may be a good in business and they have a successful business. We don't want to encourage him to give up his business and just come and sit and chant Hare Krishna. But we do want them to chant Hare Krishna, but we want them to continue their business as well, make money for Krishna. Uh, one of the early devotees, early devotees, Satsvarupa Das Goswami now, when he was Satsvarupa Das, when he was a new devotee, he was, he was working in a job. He was working for the government, doing something, and he would go to work every day. But other devotees were not working, so he also wanted to give up his job. But Prabhupada told him, no. He said, you have to keep working. He said, we want you to keep working. He said, you're working. He said, you're helping to pay the rent for our, our property where we're renting. He said, if you don't have that job, we cannot pay the rent. so Krishna consciousness is practical. You have to do what's necessary. We have to be intelligent to know what is necessary and what is not. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'm just checking if there are any other questions, but I don't see in the chat box. Uh, dear devotees, it's been a wonderful two days occasion that we have had the fortune of having Maharaj with us. That so many values and lessons that Maharaj has shared with us in relation to Srila Prabhupada and the qualities of Srila Prabhupada. I would request those who are on YouTube as well as on this uh, Zoom channel. Kindly share it with all the devotee community. Such a value will make definitely, you know, so many lessons that you can learn from Maharaj has today. And uh, I mean, we can see what austerities that uh, they, they have done in the beginning of uh, the establishment of Shakarjiyasana's Islam Society. Like, you know, even without a temple that you go and collect membership or go and take a bath in the lake, we cannot imagine today that, you know, there is only one bathroom in the entire temple that Prabhupada uh, was there. And how Prabhupada was thoughtful, you know, and he was giving a class, he's organizing his own transport to Prithavan, but that, that's the qualities of Prabhupada's thoughtfulness. And also the, Maharaj was saying that the, the Westerners are just sitting in a class and Prabhupada speaks in Bengali and this is the sound vibration which is so important. Not, uh, I mean, not necessarily whether they understand the language or not. How the etiquette is, when the etiquette is followed, it is so much pleasing to Prabhupada and Krishna was such an amazing, uh, and how Prabhupada appreciates even services done by devotees when other members were accommodating Srila Prabhupada. And uh, I mean, it's on and on. Like uh, uh, Krishna has given us the good, the good intelligence that we have to use it. And uh, I, I think it's just not limited to that. That uh, I mean, uh, we can beg if, it, if we are all fortunate, we can ask. Maharaj was saying so much about the author book distribution that uh, during the I mean, during the early days that how uh, they were doing amazing distribution. I think if if all of us are, uh, I mean, if, if we deserve, I'm sure we can beg to Maharaj to give us this association. Well, uh, one one thing I wanted to say about book distribution I forgot was that uh, I remember Prabhupada in New York, you know, there was a one devotee, his name was Triparari. He's, he's a Swami now, but he left his gone. He has his own group. So he was called the incarnation of book distribution. 
And he was very prominent in Prabhupada's time. He was very proficient in distributing books. Prabhupada has said he's an incarnation of book distribution. But Prabhupada also told him in front of the, all the devotees in New York Temple, many devotees, he said, they must want to take the book. You should not force them. And Prabhupada understood sometimes we, our devotees could be very forceful when trying to distribute books. So Prabhupada was cautioning him, the people should want the book, not that you force them. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Right, thank you, Maharaj. So those who really want to uh, have the association of Maharaj in the order of book distribution, please say, beg, beg, beg to Maharaj on the chat box. And those who are on Zoom can also type beg, beg, beg. And then if that is pleasing to Krishna, we will have the association of Maharaj with regard to the art of book distribution. Maharaj <laughs> Maharaj, all of us are offering our humble obeisances unto your divine lotus feet that we may take all these very valuable lessons and, uh, uh, I mean, take it to our heart and try to apply as much as possible in the lives. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for being with us. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to reflect on everything I learned from Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Jai. So the Zoom recording is there. Those who have typed back, they will get the Maharaj Association for the Art of Book Distribution.